Yes, people, what's going on? We're back with another preview, man. Got another big one coming tomorrow. These games are coming thick and fast, you know. It doesn't really feel like we've got we've got only two games left. Do you know what I'm saying? It's so annoying, bro. Why did we have to pick up form like this towards the end of the season? You know what I'm saying? Like, I wish we still had like another 10 games to go. Another 15 games to go. I'm like, come on, bro. I'm feeling I'm feeling pumped up now. I actually want to look I look forward to watching my team. Do you know what I'm saying? A few weeks ago, I told you lot that I don't see anything changing this season because I, honestly I did not see Poch changing anything tactically and I, and these players again they're inconsistent so I didn't think he was going to help them but he's been helping them the past few weeks you know what I'm saying so we'll chop it up um in terms of you know how we can actually go and beat Brighton again because we've beaten them twice this season already and um, we played them in the Carabao Cup we beat them um that was actually Cole Palmer's debut um for for the club he played he started in that game that was actually no, that was his first start for us sorry um against against Brighton um and then obviously we beat them at the bridge I remember Enzo scored two goals that day as well, Modric came off the bench, won us a penalty. Um, but listen, they weren't easy games. They gave us they gave us some good games, man. We all know how Brighton, you know, they pop it about. They build up really nicely from the back. Um, this season, they haven't been doing as well, in all honesty. But you have to look at their situation, man. They've lost some key players in McAllister and Caicedo. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's the engine. That's the heart of, of everything that they do. You know, everything goes through the midfield. You know what I'm saying? So, listen, we're going to chop it up. Uh, because, like I said, I'm not taking Brighton lightly. Um, they play some good fo football. And obviously, De Zerbi is a manager that, for me, would get the best out of this team. You know, if it was to get rid of Poch, he's one that I actually want to come into come into the club. Do you know what I'm saying? But before we go into it, people, listen, make sure that you're smashing up the likes. Subscribe to the channel, as always. Um, listen, we got to 1K, man. Um, so now it's road to 2K. We're going to push for that one. Um, push to get that one. You know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, I've got a lot of ideas uh, for the summer. Um, obviously, we've got the Euros coming up as well. So there'll definitely be some content around that. And transfer season again, you know, that's the only thing that gives us Chelsea fans joy recently. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully next year will be different um, and whatnot. But yeah, there's definitely going to be a lot of content on the channel. So make sure that you're smashing up the likes and make sure that you're subscribing to the channel as well. You know what I mean? But listen, I wanted to start off by just speaking about um, obviously Poch and, and the presser, what's come out today. Um, he's spoken about, you know, the, the, the mentality and, and obviously how, how our form has picked up quite a bit. Um, you know, he's kind of spoken about how at the minute, Obviously, we're the, we're the fourth fourth best team in 2024 um, on form at the minute, which is mad when I think about it. Because some of the performances I've seen, like when we've still managed to pick up some points, like get a draw or we win, I'm just like, bro, I'm not happy with the overall performance. You know what I'm saying? I walk away from it feeling like we haven't won. You know, and that, like I said before, that's where you get your confidence and that's where you get your belief from performances. And that's what we've been seeing in the past, past few games, past month or whatever, you know? And that's something that I need to carry on seeing between now and the end of the season. You know what I'm saying? Because last game was a little bit complacent, you know, uh, but in the end, the quality actually helped us. It was very good to see Poch being quite proactive. He wasn't reactive the other day. He, he made the subs very quickly, brought on Reese James, brought on Gusto, brought on Sterling. All of these guys were on in Cuckoo um, and it helped us win the game because, like I said before, when I did the the um, the preview with, uh, with, with Malak Dor, big him up, I said, listen, for me, we should be beating Forest because we've got more quality and that's what won us the game in the end. You know what I mean? So it's very, very re refreshing to see that we've only got four people injured at the minute and Sanchez being one of them and he was never going to start. So technically, we've only got three out of three players injured at the minute. Do you know what I'm saying? But Poch spoke about it, man. He said it's important to keep strong. The mentality, of course, really believe. It's true there'll be two really tough games. The team is doing well in the second part of the season. The last 26 or 27 games, they're doing very well. We need to keep in this way, trying to give our best. And like I said before, but people, it wasn't rocket science. It really wasn't rocket science to just do the basics, yeah, and try and get the best out of your team by playing people in their natural position, you know, by adding a little bit more control into that midfield. Because Cucurella inverting is something that we've seen in preseason. When 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 men, many people, including rivals, were saying Chelsea looked good, it was because Cucurella was inverted. It was a big part of that. Do you know what I'm saying? So I don't know why he decided to just go away from it when Cucurella has been available majority of the season. Like he got injured for a certain part of the season, but he could have still gone with that principle because even when Cucurella was injured, Matson was right there. Yeah, and Maxim for me is even better than Cucurella because he can invert, but he can also overlap on the outside. Do you know what I'm saying? But listen, again, it's good. I'm glad that he's he's sticking to this and I'm glad that he can clearly see that the way he's setting us up at the minute is actually helping us win games. Because one thing that Poch kept doing, you know, early on in the season is you'll find something that works. Then the following week, it's like, hmm, how can I mess up the team today? Let me try this. You know what I'm saying? Let me let me, let me me try Cucurella right back today. Let me try Enzo in the 10 today. Let me try Levi again at left back today. Let me try Chihuahua at left, left wing again today. 
you know. But now it's just keeping it simple, keeping it basic. You know what I'm saying? I, I know obviously with with everyone that's been back now, it's it's, it's going to help him with the options off the bench. But even the other week when we had 14 injuries, we still played as a team. We still played well because it set us up well. And this is what I kept saying that it is not rocket science to set the team up correctly because these men might not be world class, but they are professional footballers. If you set them up well, they will play better, which ultimately will mean that you'll you'll win more games. Do you know what I'm saying? So hopefully that carries on. But like I said, at the minute, you know, he's, he's spoken about the injuries as well. Um, he said here, the players that arrive from injury need time and we don't have time. We need to start games with players that can play the 90 minutes. That is a problem we have. The boys are not really 100% to cope from the beginning at the moment. And listen, that's a big thing at the minute because I don't want to be seeing anyone being rushed back. Rhys James, as much as I love him, and he did really well the other day when he came on, that quality, yeah, we've missed it so much. Like he, he brings a different dynamic to the team. Do you know what I'm saying? Rhys James has been a massive miss. I love Gusto, and, and, you know, for me, I think it offers us something different in terms of, you know, how he is on the ball. But just in terms of that end product, that final pass, yeah, to be fair, like, Gusto's improved his final ball, to be fair. But Rhys James, when it comes to that final ball, he never hesitates. He'll just whip it in. Whip it in. And there's so many times this season where I've seen Gusto hesitate too much and he doesn't do it first time. That's one thing that Rhys James does. He'll just see the pass and you'll play it. Do you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's, it's good to see him back in the team now. And I saw the training videos earlier of him and Nkuku having a bit of fun. It's just annoying, bro. It's so annoying at the minute. Like, why couldn't they be fit earlier? If these guys were fit in Cuckoo, Rhys James, they were fit earlier. Honestly, the season's completely different. You know, for me, it's not an excuse. It's the reality because we've we've had a lot of key players out. Yeah, but even with the injuries, I've still been saying that Poch could have done a lot more of the squad that he had. But let's be real about it. If we had Rhys James and Nkuku fit majority of the season, yo, things could have been a lot different. Some of these missed chances and Cuckoo's burying them. You know, Rhys James, again, some of, these, some of these opportunities to whip the ball in, he's just whipping it in, you know? And we're looking a lot better with him. We're looking a lot more balanced. And he's our captain. We're not having to depend on Gallagher, captain in the team. Do you know what I'm saying? So... I'm just glad to see him back in it. But like Poch has said, these guys are not ready to be playing 90 minutes at the minute. Reese James, I don't want to see him start in the game until maybe pre-season. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to see him start a game. Bring him off the bench and just bed him in. You know, and we'll talk about the lineup after uh, because for me, it's pretty much the same as the other day. The only change that I've made is, is taking Chalaba out um, and putting Gusto at right back because I want a balanced back four. You know, Chalaba's been doing really well. But for this game, I'm, I'm going to put Gusto back in there, innit? And then Rhys James can come off the bench. Do you know what I'm saying? But listen, I'm not taking Brighton lightly. I'll be real. I'm not taking them lightly. At the minute, they've got a lot of key players out as well. And um, they've got some injuries. Listen, they've been suffering of injuries all season, man. And obviously, they lost McAllister and they lost Caicedo, like I said earlier, who definitely helped them get into the Europa League, yeah? And that's why teams like Liverpool are after Caicedo and McAllister and Arsenal. You know what I'm saying? This is why Chelsea, this is why we signed Caicedo. Because these guys were just, you know playing at a top, top level, yeah, with, with a top coach, who I think, for me, give him the resources, give him better players, will do a lot better than what he's done this season. Because I've seen a lot of people, you know, trying to talk down on De Zerbi this year, man, like, oh, look at this, hit star manager, another smoking, another another beat down. And listen, for me, I'm sceptical the same way everyone else is around De Zerbi and having a plan B and being a little bit more flexible in terms of changing your, you know, your tactics of always playing out from the back. Because for me, I don't like it when I constantly see my team playing out from the back. There's times where just hoof it up. That's why I like Petrovic, because there's times where he'll just hoof it up. I still think we need an upgrade on him, but he'll just hoof it up at times. But in the Zerbi system, these guys always want to play from the back. And right now, he has not got the quality to do it consistently. Because the, the amount of times I've seen them give up a goal from individual mistakes, from the midfield, from the centre-backs, from the full-backs, it's crazy. It's crazy, do you know what I'm saying? But again... People don't watch the games. They'll just see the result. They'll see Brighton have lost again. And then they'll, straight away, they'll go and slander De Zerbi. You know what I mean? And they, they don't see the individual mistakes that, that his team are making. You know what I'm saying? But that's where I've got to look at it and think, yo, if you know your players aren't that good, they're not as good as what you had last year, surely you will change things up a bit. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, like I've said, for me, he's a brave manager. You know, and, and to play his, his, his type of football, he needs to have the players. He needs to have the quality. And for me, I think this team is full of quality and it's only going to add more. So if Poch does get sacked, listen, for me, I've said it, De Zerbi will be my number one choice, innit? Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying he's going to come here and, and win things for us. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is I think he can get the foundation right, you know, use the players well, because like I've said, they haven't been used well this season. It's only now that we're seeing Poch finally using some tactics, finally using his brain. Do you know what I'm saying? So I think De Zerbi will actually do that consistently with this team. 
You know what I'm saying? Like I said, he's worked with Caicedo. He's worked with, with Mudrik before at Shakhtar. He's worked with um, with Levi Cole as well. You know, I look at the profile players that we've got and I'm just like, yo, this guy, is, is, if it if it fails, if the Zerbi was to come in and it flopped, then I'm sorry, there's no hope for us because this squad is literally built for it. You know what I'm saying? It's not all about this pressing football. He likes to just play real technical jugador football, like CB likes to say. Do you know what I'm saying? So that'll be interesting what happens in the summer there. You know what I'm saying? And we'll definitely go into that in a little bit more detail on it because things are, are heating up with Poch. He still doesn't know what's going on with his job at the minute. He's not feeling safe at the, at the minute. Do you know what I'm saying? He even spoke about it today. So we'll see what happens with him in it. We'll see what happens with him. But this is the lineup that I've gone with um, for the game, like I said. Listen, the only change that I've made there is Gusto. Um, like I said, listen, we just need to make sure that we're clinical. That's that's the main thing for me. We need to keep making sure that making sure that we're scoring goals the way we have been recently. Because Brighton, like I've said, they are gonna come out um and try and try and play because they're playing at home. You know what I'm saying? But at the minute, they're, they're missing a lot of players, man. Um they're missing a lot of players. Like if I show you guys their predicted lineup that they could go with, you've got players like you know Danny Welbeck, um Molder, I don't even know who that is. But no, not he's good to be fair. But Gilmore, Pascal Gross. I'm sorry, like that's a midfield that we should be dominating. Especially now with Cucurella inverting as well and helping out. We should be dominating that midfield, you know. Um, they've got Lewis Dunk at the back, Webster, Igor, you know, these sort of guys. And like I said, I'm not taking them lightly because they've got a good coach and they're very well drilled. They know what they're doing. But ultimately, we have more quality than them at the minute. And I can say that confidently because, like I said, there is only four people injured at the minute. Lavia, Enzo, um, Sanchez, and um, there's one more that I'm missing. Who else is it that's injured? Um, uh, Wesley Fofana. How can I forget? Do you know what I'm saying? So if we can't go to Brighton with all the injuries that they've got, look how many injuries they've got here. March out, Mitoma out, Hinshawood out, Ferguson out, Estupinian out, Milner out, Van Heck out, Pedro out. You know what I'm saying? That's eight double our injuries. And some of these guys here start for them week in, week out when they're fit. Do you know what I'm saying? So there's no excuses. I don't care if we're playing away. There's no excuses. Yeah. We need to go there and shut these seagulls up because don't forget in the summer, you know, with the whole Kaiseido thing, you know, dragging it out, um, you know, making sure that we, we go and spend all that money. We ended up spending 115 million. Listen, part of that was our fault, to be honest. We should have just paid what they were asking for initially because it, it allowed Liverpool to come in and we ended up overpaying anyway. So Brighton were laughing to the bank. Do you know what I'm saying? But we need to make sure that we go there and we shit on these seagulls, bruv. That's what I want to see. Do you know what I'm saying? We need to make sure that we're shitting on these seagulls. I need to make sure that I'm seeing Madwaki this game. Make sure that you're switched on because last game, bro, I don't know what you were doing. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what you were doing last game. He, he, wasn't, he wasn't on it against Aina. He wasn't on it against Ola. Like, what was going on there? You know what I'm saying? Mudrik, I need the same. Please keep running in behind because Brighton, they play a high line. Yeah, I need to make sure that Palmer is finding you and you're making those off the ball runs just how you did against Forest. We need to make sure, you know, Cucurella and Caicedo, I need to make sure that you guys are tidy in that midfield because the other day there were certain parts where we were sloppy in that midfield. You know what I mean? Thiago Silva, Badia Shil, I'm starting you guys as well. You need to make sure that you're playing it into the midfield quite quickly. Do you know what I'm saying? Draw them in. And then play around there, make sure that we're building up for the back, quite similar to what they do. Do you know what I'm saying? You know? So listen, it's going to be an interesting game, like I've said. Um, I predicted, I'm only making a prediction now, actually. Uh, we're scoring quite a lot of goals, man. And listen, Brighton, like I said, they play a high line, which is going to play into our hands. We don't like facing low blocks like that, to be honest. Unless we're set up correctly, we don't like facing low blocks, in it. So I'm going to say, do you know what? I'm going to say 3-1 Chelsea. Because you see what one thing about Danny Welbeck, that guy loves scoring against us, man. The man ahead as he scored against Chelsea is a joke. It needs to be studied, honestly. Um, but yeah, I'm going to say 3-1 Chelsea, man. But listen, just a quick one, people, like I said. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get a Brighton fan for this one. <laughs> um, a lot of people a lot of people are busy today. So listen, let me know um, what you think of the game, how you think the game's going to go, um, what your lineup will be as well. Just let me know your thoughts in the comments, man. Let me know how you're feeling about the Chelsea at the minute. Do you know what I mean? But listen, as always, people, make sure that you smash up the likes, um, subscribe to the channel, and love. Until next time, peace.